Boston, uh, where he helped his uncle William Waldron run the Lewiston Journal, which William and his father had started. That was the first newspaper in Lewiston. Then he went to St. Louis, Missouri and became a conductor for George Pullman with the Pullman cars. Uh, George Pullman invented the Pullman cars and, and patented them uh, in 1867. In 22 years he became the chief operating officer of Pullman, which was the largest corporation in the world at that time. Uh, he retired in 1906, moved to Lovell, Maine, built the mansion, which today is selling for four and a half million dollars. Uh, Robert Todd Lincoln was his boss. Robert Todd Lincoln, when they had the great Pullman Railroad strikes, and Robert Todd Lincoln was called before the government, they said, what's your relationship with C.A. Gaslon? And he said, he and I meet in my office every morning. Alonzo was uh, a mayor of Lewiston. He was on the school board in Lewiston. Uh, he got his degree in, he was a surgeon. He got his degree in medicine from McGill University and died here in Lewiston. Uh, and there are now, at this point, there are six Alonzos in the family. He was the first. Well, the governor was the first. I'm but sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. His father was the first. Yeah. He was the second. He and his, when he came back from McGill and started practice, he practiced with his father for a short while. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. I've heard it said that you can only be here if you're a descendant of... No. That's not no, true. No, it's not true. No, uh, the Gaslons were very generous. Uh, in the beginning, there were naturally because there weren't many people in Lewiston they were related to a lot of them and so you'll see in the front part of the cemetery uh, where a lot of there are a lot of gas a lot of relatives to gas lawns. if you come to the back of the cemetery you'll find people who aren't even related uh, uh, this back part wasn't so wasn't given this back part was given to the town the rest of it doesn't even belong to the town this was given to the town in 1871 and that's why C.A. And, and Alonzo were able to uh, be buried back here. But this, this all belonged to the gas lawns. Every piece that was given was part of the gas lawn farm. Hey, Dave, where's your plot? Well, I'm going to ask the Cemetery Association to have a plot back here. Uh, I definitely go to Rosemary. Rosemary, by the way, has a daughter and her husband are buried. Her husband uh, was William. He was a surgeon. Uh, uh, and Elizabeth uh, was buried here in the year 2000. Elizabeth Gaslon. Her husband was William Gaslon, yes. So where's your plot? I haven't picked out the exact spot, but I have. The Gaslon Cemetery Association said there is no problem with me having a plot here. <laughs> but don't die yet. <laughs> <laughs> William Skelton Okay, uh, Moses isn't an ancestor, but he's uh, a cousin of uh, an ancestor. Uh, I have two story, two things to tell about him. Uh, one uh, was that in January of 1851, I'm emphasizing it, it was January, uh, his father and Hosea Garslon and he went down to the Androscoggin River and cut a hole in the river for Moses' baptism in the river. Uh, it was a cold day, regardless of how uh, much the sun was shining. Uh, but uh, apparently he was 
uh, committed to the Lord and wanted to be uh, baptized and wasn't going to just wait for uh, summer for that. The other uh, story uh, was reported in the uh, newspaper in 1884 when he was an old, older man. It had to do with a case before the uh, Lewiston Police Court. It appears that the original trouble between Moses Hodgkin and uh, Mr. Nichols, uh, the original trouble arose from a mistake at a funeral. The brother of one of the parties was accidentally shot in the woods a number of years ago and out of the management of the funeral arose a family feud that has been intensified. <laughs> Friday, Moses Hodgkins, who is an old man, came into the county attorney's office with a bleeding head and a cut on the face, <laughs> going right for, for justice. Uh, he related how Nichols had been passing his place and had shouted out something and that his wife had replied, that is Moses' wife, and that Nichols had knocked her down and then knocked her daughter down and then assaulted him. Uh, the trial in court seemed to develop the guilt of the accused. There was a big crowd of witnesses. It was, it was great entertainment in those days to go to court and see your neighbors squabble. Uh, the parties are neighbors and relations. Uh, the court fined Nichols five dollars in costs on each count uh, amounting to 28 28 28 dollars and 28 cents in all. Uh, he did appeal but I didn't find what happened uh, on appeal. Uh, Moses uh, lived uh, up on the uh, in the very large farm dwellings uh, up on the hill. Uh, and uh, I also lived there, uh, grew up there. And there was always this uh, identification of a certain lot of land as the Nichols place. And as a kid, I didn't pay any attention, uh, but apparently, uh, it was right next door to Moses, uh, and uh, Nichols lived right next door. So we come now to Jonathan Hodgkin. Uh, yeah, the big white, the big white house on the left as you go up. About a half a mile, a little more half a mile. Uh, and that's where I live as well. Oh, in that big white house? In that big white house with a big barn. Yep, okay. Uh, Captain Jonathan Hodgson, uh, he was very proud that he became captain, that was not of a ship but of the local militia. Uh, he's very proud of that. He recorded uh, going to get fitted for uniforms and so forth, uh, getting a saber, uh, and, and all the equipment. Uh, and he, uh, even after he was no longer captain, he insisted on being cap called captain, and he has it right on his tombstone. Uh, his father uh, died at sea before he was born, and that's all I know in terms of his father, uh, except for basic genealogical uh, information. Don't know what the circumstance was. Uh, from age seven, he lived uh, with uh, his uncle Thomas Hodgkin, which we'll talk about. I think he's down there. Uh, he did run away from uh, his uncle as a teenager. Uh, for eight and a half months, but did uh, return and promise to work until age 21 when his <coughs> uncle would uh, uh, give him a farm uh, and uh, set, him up, set him up as a farmer. Uh, and, he, and that did happen. Uh, 
He shares the same grave and stone with his uh, first wife, uh, Sally. Uh, she originally was buried in a, a plot uh, near his, Jonathan's small brick house, which still exists. It's a small brick house across from the Apple Valley Golf Course uh, on Pine Woods Road. Uh, but uh, when Jonathan uh, died, uh, their son George petitioned the city to transfer uh, Sally's remains to uh, be buried with uh, his father. Uh, and there's a separate stone for the second wife, Orpha, who is also, who is also Sally's sister. And uh, Jonathan had uh, six children with each of the sisters. Uh, I can tell you a lot more about him, but I don't want to bore you to regards to my family. So let's talk about Uncle Thomas, who took uh, Captain Jonathan in. Uh, I think I have this correct. Is it, is it Thomas? Yes, Thomas. Right. Now, one reason Uncle Thomas, besides being a, a good person for, uh, in terms of family responsibility, another reason he uh, took in uh, Jonathan, as well as one of Jonathan's cousins, uh, was that uh, Thomas was a bachelor. He, he, he appeared to be a confirmed bachelor. Uh, and he needed help on the farm, of course. And so these uh, young fellows, seven, eight years old, could uh, be of some uh, help to him. Uh, it wasn't until uh, Thomas uh, was uh, 33 years old uh, that he married, he married Esther Hodgkin, Jonathan's sister, or his niece. Um, at, at her age was 18 years and two days. Uh, so he was just waiting, I guess, for a while until she became of age. Uh, he was a carpenter and a farmer. Uh, he uh, constructed the Old South Meeting House, which was uh, the church and uh, the meeting house for town meetings uh, that was on the corner of Mitchell Street and Pleasant Street, just above the Ramada Inn. Uh, it's long gone. There's now a, a residence uh, there. Uh, but it was there for, it was used for at least 30 years by the town for uh, town meetings. He was uh, eccentric. Uh, and there were, I've run across uh, at least three stories in the newspapers uh, after his death. Three stories where people were relating stories about what happened in the town of the good old days. And these are stories about uh, Captain, uh, about uh, uh, Thomas Hodgkin. And I'll just uh, tell you one of them. Uh, on. One day, he went into uh, a Mr. Garish's store down in Lisbon. Now, Lisbon was where the people uh, went to do their shopping, uh, rather than up, uh, at the falls. Uh, and so, uh, one day, Uncle Tommy uh, went into the store, and uh, Mr. Garish was out back somewhere, and so uh, he, uh, Tommy, uh, helped himself, uh, rolling a barrel of flour out the door and put it in his wagon, got into the wagon and drove off. Uh, the story is that uh, when Mr. Garrish came back, uh, one of the loungers, uh, who apparently didn't know Uncle <coughs> Tommy, said, did you sell a barrel of flour today? Uh, no. Uh, uh, describe the, the, the barrel out. 
Uh, and so they described him. And he said, oh, 